Hi guys, how you doing? My name is Tom Antos. Uh, today I'm going to review two uh, s camera cranes. Uh, they're both uh, uh, from the came It's a Chinese company. I reviewed already their Steadicam and uh, three-axis camera gimbal. And uh, there's two different cranes up here. One is the, the bigger one. Uh, it's basically just meant for bigger cameras. It, it can support more weight. And, and this one is really small, sort of compact uh, crane that's really just meant for DSLR cameras or, or you know anything lighter than that. I'm going to show you guys how you set these up. So this is for your counterweight. So uh, I'm going to do this or try to do this by myself, but ideally you want to do this with another person. Uh, so you want to sort of put your camera over there over already and have somebody support that while you counterbalance this so that you basically end up with the same amount of weight on both sides. So then it's very easy for you to move the, the, the crane. Now you can use different things for a counterweight. You can use, I mean, you can use literally anything. You can use some shopping bags with things, your camera bag. You can use sandbags. You can just throw them up here. Um, you can put, uh, ideally, I think it would be best to use these, uh, you know, weights. You, you get, uh, you know, in your gym equipment and uh, basically just take out this thing, put as many weights as you want. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, you can just put the weights in there and just tighten this thing. Here. So, yeah, now, as you can see, I kind of balanced it where the, the, it's more or less the same amount of weight on, on both sides. So you can just with one finger, you can move the, the, the whole crane up and down. Now, obviously, we don't have our uh, camera over there yet. So once I add the camera, then I'll have to sort of balance it again and add a little, a little bit more weight here. So let me put the camera on there. So as you can see, once I put the camera on, you know, right away, the crane goes down. So you got to be very careful. Obviously, make sure you balance this. So like I said, ideally two people and one person's counterbalancing while you're putting on the camera. Uh, so yeah, let me just add a little extra weight to here. So I'm just gonna put on a little extra weight here and then put this thing here to lock it, tighten it, make sure your weights don't jump, don't kind of move around uh, or it's gonna create extra vibrations. Now, as you can see, once I added the extra weight, if I let go of it, this side is a little bit too heavy. So it lifts the camera up in the air. So the, the good thing about this crane is that you can then sort of fine tune the, the weight of this because obviously you'll never get exactly the same amount of weights as, as you have the camera, you know, to match the camera on the other side. So what you can do is you can loosen this thing here and just put the camera down on the ground first. Loosen this and basically by shortening this, you're, you're reducing the weight on this side. So now I shortened it, you can see now it's not enough weight. So I'll extend it a little bit. You can make tiny adjustments here. And now I'm very close. Let me extend it a little bit more. And I think there, once you're balanced, you should be able to just leave it level like this. And as you can see, the weights and the camera are the same level and it, and it just stays nicely. So once you have a nicely balanced like this, just with one finger, you can move it you know, down or up and that's the ideal thing you want it to have perfectly balanced like whenever you're using cranes uh, because then it's going to take away any of the vi uh, extra vibrations that you would otherwise get and also that it just means you don't have to put you know extra force into pushing the camera up or down which again creates vibrations and the good thing about having this uh, this ball up here mount for, for your uh, your, your uh, tripod head is that you have here these bubble heads that you can easily go and then just level make sure your camera is nice and level and that's it you can start recording so we'll we'll, we'll get a few shots up here so I, I thought to you know to properly test out these cranes i would get these sort of shots that you would expect to see in a you know you expect to get in a, in a film sort of you know f f filming situation so these are basically shots that are, you know i rehearsed obviously with my with my actor here and uh and you know, if I'm trying to see if I can get a you know smooth transition from one position to the, to the to the, the second, and also be able to to hold nice and still you know on both ends uh, of the camera move. 
Now here, I'm, I'm trying to get to sort of a low angle shot and then, you know, as the guy's walking away, I, I move the camera up. Now I'm, I'm operating the camera myself and I have to also try to pull focus at the same time. So uh, it's far from ideal, but even in this situation, the, the camera, you know, the uh, crane uh, performs pretty well. And it's, you know, it's, it's a big part of it is because it's so easy to operate. I literally just, you know, sort of push it up with one finger. And, uh, you know, another really cool thing here that this crane has is uh, it has this sort of dampening system. So you can tighten it and, uh, and or loosen it depending on how, how smooth you want it to, to move you know, up and down, uh, which really helps. And uh, you can also do the same sort of adjustment here for the panning motion uh, from left to right. Now in this shot, I'm going to try to uh, basically start off on the, on the actor's face, then go down, see, basically just reveal as he's taking out his cell phone. And then we follow you know, up back to his face as, as he ends up talking on, 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 the, on the phone. And uh, as you can see, it, uh, you know, it also performs pretty well. Now, you know, uh, if in a real probably, you know, world situation, you would have, uh, you know, if probably a much bigger camera tool because you probably put a, a, maybe a wireless follow focus or, uh, you know, probably like, a, you know, some monitor cables or something, you know, what I mean, and, uh, and you would probably also ideally want to be able to operate uh, the crane from behind. Um, and have uh, and, and basically have one person sort of moving the crane while another person is responsible for just for the you know the, the panning and the tilting of the camera itself uh, and then maybe even have a third person uh, you know operating the, the, the focus uh, and the good thing about this crane is because it's it is so robust and so you know just you know really well built uh, you, you can without a problem put a much bigger camera on there and you know on your whole rig uh, I actually used this exact same uh, camera crane uh, with the Blackmagic uh, 4K camera, you can see up here, and uh, you know I had you know my rail system, battery, all that stuff. So you know it was, it was a lot more weight, and uh, you know I've, I was able to get a, you know a few really really cool look sh sh shots with it. Even though on the day of the filming, we, you know somebody actually uh, I'm not gonna say who <laughs> uh, forgot uh, to bring these weights, so we actually end up using the just you know some bags that we had lying around and, and some sandbags. And it, it worked really well, you know, as a, as a counterweight. But as you can see up here, I had my assistant sort of, you know, doing the camera move while I was just operating the pen and tilt of the camera. And here's sort of this, you know, just a quick test shot I did while we were getting ready. And again, as you can see, you know, even with all this weight, I'm able to, to literally operate the, the crane with just, you know, with j j just my finger. I can just push it up and down without any problems. And, uh, and here's these two different sort of shots that I got of, you know, where I start off on the, on the driver's face and I go, go down to reveal the, the fr uh, front sort of, you know, grill of the car. All right, so uh, now I'm going to test out this smaller crane. Uh, this one, uh, like I was saying before, it's suitable just basically for lighter cameras. And um, again, you, you ideally want to have a nice tripod, like something sturdy, but, but you don't need anything as heavy duty as this tripod. So the way that this mounts is uh, you just you kind of like basically like a, like a camera. You just you have different uh, you know, threads here and you will just basically attach it to our base plate of the camera. So the cool thing about this crane is that uh, it's, it's super light. It's all made out of carbon fiber. And as you can see, even like when I tighten this up here, without any weight up here, you know, and you know, this is obviously a lot longer and a lot heavier up here, it's already standing, you know, uh, horizontal. So uh, now I'm going to put a little bit of weight on the back. And this one also comes with little weights. Um, 
that are easily attachable. So these weights are really nice because they're, they're uh, they have like a rubber coating on it, so they, they won't get damaged, and they perfectly thread on the on the back of this uh, this crane. It, it's a it's a perfect crane for when you're traveling somewhere and you want to take this uh, in, in your luggage, because uh, you know it's it's a very small bag, it's a few weights, and basically like everything is included with this. Uh, so here, you know, you can see me just mounting the camera uh, and yeah, I just put the camera by itself But this, this crane can handle a little bit more weight and the cool thing about it is the, the, about this jib is that you can use actually the, the uh, Tilting function of your tripod to be able to remotely tilt the camera up and down and Again, I tried to basically get the same kind of shots uh, as I got with the other crane uh, and you know this is using the exact same camera and, and lens and everything so as you can see you know the results are, are almost identical uh, except you know this crane obviously cannot handle as much weight as the other one so if you are planning to use a much bigger camera then uh, probably the other crane is, is a better choice here again I get that same shot sort of starting low on the feet and going up And here again, I'm getting that shot, you know, with the cell phone and then, you know, following up back to the, 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 uh, the, the guy's face. And the results are, you know, I think equally just as good on, on both uh, cranes. So it's really just a preference, you know, for what kind of size crane, uh, you know, you'll need for your production. So, uh, you know, as you guys can see, uh, you know, both cranes, I think, can, can produce good results. But, you, you know, they're not... Uh, they're not perfect in the sense that you know it's it's kind of like learning to operate you know even a tripod you, you gotta you know kind of practice make sure that you get the, the smooth shots but they are capable of doing the smooth shots now obviously this smaller crane uh it has advantages but it also has disadvantages so advantages being it's very small super light you can really you know it's compact when you pack it up it just fits into this little bag and you can take it with you you know if you're traveling for example uh so that's the great thing about it uh, the the bad thing I guess is just you know well not so much a bad thing it's just the limitation of it is the fact that it's it, it cannot take a lot of weight so if you're just going to put on your DSLR with some lenses it's going to be okay but if you want to start adding rail systems mud bags you know other things it's it's probably in a, in a, I I don't I'm not sure whether it's going to hold up the weight uh, now both of these cranes uh, they have multiple attachment points so you can easily attach especially if you buy those little clamps. Uh, a monitor which I would definitely suggest getting a monitor if you want to operate it from from the back of the, the crane um, and uh, yeah and uh, like I said you know very well built both of them now the the bigger one up here that I have uh, that I tested out it's it's smoother and obviously can carry a lot more weight the, the problem you know well again not, it's not so much a problem but a limitation of it is just because it's so big uh, you're not you're not gonna easily take it with you when you're traveling uh, and you definitely need, I would say, minimal two people to, to help basically set it up once you start adding up all the weight and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, in the end, I think, you know, they're, they're really, uh, I don't know, they're, they're fun products. And I just say, you know, if you guys are interested in getting some, you know, really kind of detailed moving shots, you know, kind of going up and down, or uh, then, then, you know, these cranes are, are probably, you know, a great way to... Uh, to, to, to try to try getting those shots you could get similar shots with um, with a steadicam or like a three axis stabilizer which the same company also sells but obviously the limitation of that is that you can only go as high a, a, as your hand whereas uh, you know these cranes obviously especially if you put it up on a higher on the tripod they can go a lot more higher uh, anyways if you guys want to find out more info about where, where to get these cranes uh, you know and all the you know basically all my thoughts about it uh, as well as all my free other you know filmmaking tutorials and, and, and products that I sell then check out my website at tomantosfilms.com and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks